G'day possums, welcome back to the lab. We're going to go through the battery replacement of the Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone set. This is the quick and dirty episode where I don't waffle as much. I'm going to cover the microphone or transmitter and the receiver. But if you want the individual episodes, check out the video links in the description down below. Enough talk. Let's get started. To make things fast and easy, we will break this episode into different chapters. Microphone disassembly, receiver disassembly, battery talk, battery modification, microphone reassembly, and then receiver reassembly. Let's start with microphone disassembly. As usual, my favorite toy, the Bosch heat gun. I'm just heating the top of the Rode Wireless Go 2 here. I'll set my temperature for about 90 degrees Celsius. So I'll get this nice and toasty warm and break any adhesive or sealant. Um, and then we'll crack it open. We'll give it a little bit longer. Okay, I think it's hot enough. So what we'll do is we'll try and exploit a crack in here. And we'll do that under the microscope. I've got my eye sesame tool here if you can see that under the microscope and I'm just going to exploit the right side here I'm just going to get try and get the thin edge in dig in a little bit and just try and get underneath this plastic it's just a matter of getting that tool underneath you might chip away a little bit of paint. And now we just get our little plastic spudger, put it under the pride edge and just run our little tool around. All the way around. I stop at the nine o'clock position and separate the RF antenna from the top case. Then continue carefully opening and you can see the RF antenna is intact. We have our little battery connector here and you know on first look you probably think oh yeah I might give it a good old pull and try and rip it out but this is another trap for young players. This is what we call a pop-up connector and all you have to do is put the old spudger underneath, give it a quick twist and it should just pop up and come straight out. I'm just going to reheat the top again, get it nice and toasty so I can separate the battery underneath because it's held on with that adhesive. So that's nearly done. We'll flip it over and we'll remove the battery. Get my spudger underneath just gently pry up. Done. And we're just heating up the Rode Wireless Go 2 receiver here, just getting it to 90 degrees Celsius and we essentially want to heat the top and that will help break the bond with the actual innards of the wireless go to receiver and make it a little bit easier to pry up the whole top of the assembly. The best way to exploit an edge is use the iSesimo tool and we're going to start in this specific corner here and we're doing this for a reason. It's because it's the safest corner to start from and just dig the tool in and just gently pry it underneath. Just gently lift the corner if we can. 
we get our spudge in this corner and slowly work it across and then we stop at the E because in this corner here they've hidden an antenna and we're ju just going to gently pry the top up and not tear the antenna up at the same time. Up and gently around the corner and sometimes the antenna will stick to the top here. So have to be very careful and peel that antenna away from the top. You can see it's slightly stuck a little bit further so we'll just move it along. Just gently separate it. There we go. And that's clear the antenna section. We're going to gently move the spudger down the other side and gently peel the top back and open it up and we have a little screen inside which will hopefully separate. May need to reheat the job if things are still a little bit sticky in there. And just gently peel this back. Nice and easy. Slowly and carefully to break that last bond and we're done we now have to break the innards or the guts away from the shell and the best way to do this is if you locate your little USB-C connector here and just above that we're going to try and exploit a gap in here and we're going to do that with an X-Acto knife and we're just going to run the X-Acto knife down this edge, just above our USB-C connector, over and over again, about a dozen times. Just make it nice and deep. Keep on going until we have a little bit of a channel in there. And then we're gonna get a small flat screwdriver around 1.6 or 2 millimeters and just probe into this little crack and just break the shell away nice and gently working our way around just breaking that bond just like that nice and easy after manipulation for a couple of minutes, you should be able to get the iSesimo tool underneath. And then you should be able to pop up this plastic a little bit, just the plastic. Just kind of work it in there. Watch that LCD screen. And then you should be able to carefully work it around, clearing that plastic cover. Work that tool around, spinning the job nice and carefully. Keep on going. Watch our little antenna in this corner. Okay, got it to a point where we may be able to peel it up. Just watch that LCD screen. that is our top plastic cover off. We will gently flip over the top board and look at that little possums. We have our battery here. So let's gently put that down on our lab bench. To disconnect our battery, spudger underneath, quick flick of the wrist. and our battery is detached. So we'll have a look at our old battery and we're gonna have a look at what we're going to replace it with. Right, we have our old battery here. It's 3.8 volts at 350 milliamp hour, rechargeable lithium polymer battery. And you can see at the top it says Rode here. Rode didn't make these batteries, they're put out to a some sort of factory in China to make these batteries to a, a specification. 
and um, this is going to be its replacement. It's an eco cell. I got this off eBay for about ten dollars. 3.7 volts, so it's not 3.8, but uh, look, it's close enough. And this 3.8 is just all marketing guff. So 3.7, um, slightly lower capacity, 250 milliamp hours. But you know, if you've got a dead microphone and you're just about to spend three or four hundred dollars to replace the whole lot, I think you can live with your um, charging capacity capacity being down by about you know that 20 or 30 percent. So not a not a huge loss in charging capacity. It's around the same size. Uh, both these batteries have three leads, so plus and minus, plus the third lead being NTC or negative temperature coefficient monitoring. And that's just to make sure that as the battery is being charged, um, it doesn't heat up too much. And if it heats up too much, that charging is slowed down to protect the battery itself. Um, we checked this previously earlier today and it came up at zero volts. So this battery is completely cactus. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to chop the lead off here and I'm going to attach it onto here um, and we'll solder that all up very neatly and we'll plug it in and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I disconnect the original plug from the old battery using offset cutting to avoid shorts. I prepare the new battery using offset cuts to avoid shorts again. I solder the negative to the original plug. Then the positive. And last, the NTC or temperature wire. We'll quickly check our battery voltage to make sure it's all serviceable. I'll turn on the multimeter. Just put negative down there. Let's bring in our positive probe and try not to short things out. And we can see we've got just over four volts or 4.2 volts. So this battery is serviceable. Plug the new battery in, put the battery in the cavity, then I test the charging and the mic. I heat the top, then remove the old double sided tape. I black out scratches and chips. In the next step, we're going to be using the B7000 adhesive, and they use this to seal up uh, smartphones such as Samsung's and uh, iPhones. We're just spreading this around the outside. Put our top back on. Wipe off any excess adhesive and clamp up with some micro clamps. And we'll just let that sit for about a day to dry off. I place the new battery next to the receiver circuitry, plug the new battery in put the battery in the cavity, align the USB-C connector, then I test the charging, I have some B7000 adhesive, they use this stuff to reseal smartphones, I run the adhesive around the inside of the case. Then I refit the internal plastic. I heat the top, then remove the old double sided tape.
clean the underside of the top with isopropyl alcohol and the wipe. I black out scratches and chips. I then apply more B7000 adhesive around the edges. Then put the top back on. Wipe off excess adhesive. I then apply micro clamps and let it dry for a day. Well, that's it. I hope you liked this quick and dirty episode. It only cost me roughly $30 to replace all batteries. That's $10 per device. Better than paying $400 for a new Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone set and less broken items to landfill that could be easily fixed. If you're interested in seeing other stuff repaired, check out the rest of our channel. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe. Other than that, we will see you next time in the lab.